June of 2010, we hit the road, a band of anglers on a mission. What kind of mission, you may ask? This kind. In a little over two weeks, we traveled over a thousand miles, or a third of an oil change, hitting up some of the best fishing Midwest has to offer. After more than a week on the road, you begin to slip into the subtle groove of things, and the trip becomes more about the journey instead of about the different destinations. Yeehaw! We're gonna need a license and a giant bottle of whiskey. What do you want? Can I get a number? Who's this little dude? Where are you from? <laughs> We got a couple of those 13 year old boys driving a Civic. We just gave them one of these. <laughs> got a new friend. Got a buddy. Let's go check in. All right, come on. And around this time, roughly halfway through our trip, we made it to the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. The crew at Tight Lines Fishing Company, Tim, Bart, Hunter, and Nate, are a motley group of fishermen, which, despite their nomadic guiding paths, have returned home to the Midwest and their roots in pursuit of smallies. How's the fisher, you may ask? Well, so good that for almost a decade, they leave the comfort of their homes for the summer to make this 14-foot trailer their home. If you wonder where they fish, well, we've been sworn to secrecy. And quite frankly, we're not about to cross anyone who lives on the corner of 44 Mag and 7 Millimeter Drive. I think what's really super unique about our fishery is, you know, bass have always gotten like that, I don't want to downplay it, but it's, you know, metal flake bass boats and hats on backwards and doing 100 miles an hour across a big flat or a big bay. And you know, really the bass to me are the rivers that are so amazing and so unique, very much like trout rivers. They're native, they're wild, and uh, they're strong as hell, and they eat a fly like a fish should. I went out west because I thought, you know, in my eye, trout was the coolest thing you could do. And then, you know, you kind of remember where you came from, and where we came from was this area where we'd fish trout in the, in the spring, the trout stream got warm, and then we'd come up the, the rivers up in the Midwest, we'd catch smallmouth bass. You know, we, it was filler. It was filler for us. But they fought like crazy. As we grew up, we realized that they were what a hardy game fish. Uh, similarities are striking between small bass and trout. You know, I look at a small bass, I tell my clients every day, small bass is like a big brown trout. It's not that, that riffle rainbow trout that you go after with little nymphs. It's that big, wily brown trout that lays in the shadows that eats meat. You know, that's a small mall. You know, you, 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 you huff meat into cover and you look for a player and you want an aggressive take. That's what a small mall does. You know, they're opportunistic, they are players. You hit the spot and they will attack. Small mall, for the most part, are going for crayfish, bait fish, or dragonflies. The big problem lately with the low water has been the death from above factor. Anything with a huge splash has spooked them off. So we're fishing poppers like, like dead drift dragonflies like, like you'd fish on the Henry's Fork. It's really great. 
you know, I think any of the other guys will tell you that, that just kind of learning and accepting the fact that, you know, if the fish are eating, they're eating. When the fish are in that mood where they're, they're kind of on the fence as to whether they're going to eat or not, I think that, you know, bait fishermen and, and gear fishermen with some of the soft plastics and the scents and stuff like that, they have that ability to kind of will fish into eating or to kind of force them into eating if they're, if they're kind of on the, on the edge. And, you know, as, as fly fishermen, we can't make fish eat because we don't have that scent and stuff. And that's part of what, what makes it amazing and special is that, you know, people always say, well, why do you fly fish? And I say, well, not, not because it's cool or anything else like that, but because it's more satisfying. I'm lucky enough to have a staff of guys and a group of guys that these guys aren't on the river on a Saturday or a Sunday and are just like, you know, uh, I'm a weekend warrior. The guys that work for the shop are on the river every day of the week. But when you're on the river for a hundred days straight, you know where the bass live. That's so where they live. I, I really don't know. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you tomorrow. Let's show you. It's, it's kind of a crapshoot, dude. <laughs>